In this video, we're going to continue our conversation about hydronics and control systems by talking about aquastats. Now, aquastats are high and low limit controllers in a heating hydronic system. As a high limit control, the control works like any other high limit control or system. It's a safety. It will shut the system off if the temperature gets too high, usually about 180 degrees. As a low limit control, it will turn the burner on if the temperature drops too low, usually about 160 degrees. This maintains a minimum boiler temperature. So the low limit control on the Aquasat turns the burner on when the boiler temperature drops below the set point. It turns the burner off when the temperature of the water reaches the set point. In systems with domestic hot water, the low limit maintains the boiler temperature when heat is not required, thus known as a warm start boiler. We have to maintain boiler temperature for domestic hot water. The Aquastat also includes circulator controls. Okay, it's used in systems which have both domestic hot water capability and it prevents a circulator from running if the burner's on the low limit side. It prevents cooler water from circu being circulated for heating. And it also prevents the boiler from getting too cold for domestic hot water generation. We also have high and low limit controllers. This is another type of aquastat. It uses a sensing bulb and a cap tube to measure the changes in temperature and transmit that to bellows, which moves a set of contacts. As the bellows expand and contract, it moves the contacts, which open and close a switch. When there's a call for heat, the circulator control turns on the circulator. If the temperature of the boiler gets too low, the circulator is turned off until the boiler can warm up again. This prevents excess run time while the boiler heats up. Dual Aquastat controllers combine the function of the high and low limit controls with the circulator control in one package. A single pole double throw switch is used in the low limit and circulator control with a single pole single throw switch serving as the high limit. When the boiler temperature is below the set point, the R and B contacts are closed, that's the low limit side, and the R and W contacts are open, that's the circulator side. In other words, the circulator cannot run. When the boiler temperature is above the set points, the R to B is open, that's the boiler, and the R to W is closed, that's the circulator. Now there's also combination Aquastat controls, and these are what you're going to see most often. They come in two types, Aquastat relays and triple Aquastat relays. Aquastat relays combine the function of the switching relay for the circulator and the temperature control of the system. Aquastat relays are used in systems that do not have domestic hot water coils installed. In other words, we do not need to maintain a higher boiler water temperature. They contain the transformer for control voltage because it has to have control voltage, relay to control the burner and circulator, and temperature control for high and low limit operations. The boiler is not operating when the thermostat is not calling for heat. It's a cold start boiler. In other words, it will get cold before it starts up. Triple aquastats are used in systems that are required to provide domestic hot water. Some also provide zone control. There's single zone models for gas and oil fired applications. There's millivolt models available for gas millivolt applications. And this type of aquastat will maintain a low limit temperature all year round. In other words, the boiler is always warm. Triple aquastats provide burner control when there's no call for heat, thus keeping the boiler warm enough for domestic hot water use, known as warm start. This is on the low limit side. Upon a call for heat, the triple aquastat switches over and runs off the high limit side, providing very hot water for the heating circuit. Most triple aquastats also provide circulator control. They will not allow the circulator come to come on until the boiler is warm enough. This is controlled by the low limit setting, usually about 160 degrees. So aquastat electrical connections are pretty much standardized. Very few differences. L1 and L2 are the 120 volt power supply. TNT are the 24 volt transformer connection or thermostat connections. C1 and C2 are circulator motor connections, and B1 and B2 are burner connections. Voltage checks can be made at all of these electrical connections. The Honeywell 8148 has low voltage B1 and B2 for gas valve voltage. The Honeywell 
8148A has high voltage B1 and B2 for oil burner connections. You have to make sure you have the correct Aquasat. Do not mix up the two or damage to the control or gas valve and burner will occur. The A, again, you have the 8148A. My line voltage comes in here at the top, L1, L2. Circulator C1, C2. Burner B1, B2. The E, again, it's very clearly labeled 24 volt burner or millivolt burner. We still have our circulator and we have our line voltage. But again, the 8148E, it's a low voltage burner. Get it on the right terminals. All Aquastats use a differential control. This allows the technician to fine tune the control for a specific application. The differential acts as the other side of a set of set point. If there was no differential, an Aquastat set at 180 degrees would turn the burner on at 180 and off at 181. This would be very inefficient and waste fuel. This is known as short cycling. Burner comes on and off too quick. Most triple Aquastat controllers will have a low limit adjustment. This is usually set for about 180 degrees. Uh, sorry, a high limit adjustment at 180 degrees. Low limit adjustment at 160 degrees. And a differential adjustment that's usually 10 degrees. So when you look at a triple Aquastat, you're seeing this. You have your differential, you have your high limit, and your low limit. The 8182 is a triple Aquastat. On a warm day where only domestic hot water is being used, the system is running on low limit operation. The low limit may be set to 160 degrees with a differential setting of 10. The boiler temperature is at 159 degrees. Nothing is running. Someone starts using hot water, taking a shower, doing laundry, doing dishes. The boiler temperature starts to drop until it reaches 150 degrees. This is 10 degrees below the set point of 160. The burner starts and warms the boiler up to the set point of 160. The burner shuts off. Notice the 10 degrees is the diff setting of the differential. On a call for heat, the triple S Aquastat switches over to run off the high limit side. The burner will come on and heat the water until it reaches the high limit setting. Remember our setting about 180 degrees. The circulator starts running as soon as it gets above the low limit setting. The burner shuts off at the high limit. The water temperature in the boiler will drop from that high limit point until it reaches 10 degrees below the high limit setting. So about 170 degrees if we use the numbers I showed earlier. The burner will co then come on, reach the set point again, and shut off. This continues until the call for heat is over and the burner goes back to the low limit operation. The smaller the differential, the more the burner will cycle. The closer the water temperature will be kept to the set point. The greater the differential, the less the burner will cycle, and the greater the swing in temperature variations. Now, Keep in mind when we're talking about burners or boilers that are connected to chimneys, okay? We're not talking high efficiency equipment here. We're talking the traditional cast iron or boiler that's connected into a chimney. You have to have the burner running long enough to warm that chimney or you start having problems with condensation. So yes, it's great to keep the water close to a set point, but the more frequently the burner cycles on and off, the less heat that's going up that chimney, and you're going to start having condensation in that chimney. So the happy medium for most applications is about 10 degree differential. Keep in mind the Aquastat is an electrical device and should not be allowed to get wet. Whenever you're servicing the plumbing side of the heating or cooling system, Pay special attention to this. Protect the control from water by covering it with a plastic bag any time you could have the potential of spilling water on it. Water and electrical devices do not mix.